Welcome to the 2016 Ford GT, the road car based on the race car that marks Ford's return to Le Mans and, Ford hopes, beating Ferrari at its own game, something it first did in 1966, besting Marinello's finest with a 1-2-3 victory. The last Ford GT came out in 2005 and it was brilliant. It was a modern interpretation on the GT40 and it was really bloody quick as well. This new one, well, it brings it not only bang up to date, but also further into the future. Hell, it looks more like a Lamborghini than a Lamborghini. Designed in secret long before its Detroit 2015 debut by a team led by Moray Cullum, brother of Jaguar's Ian Cullum, it's utterly stunning. It's made from carbon fibre and, I suspect, magic. We're told that there's nothing on here that doesn't need to be either, and it uses aluminium subframes to keep it light but still mega strong. Take a look at its silhouette, it is unmistakably linked to the GT40. Those headlights, the shape and positioning as well are an awesome hark back, as are my favourite bit, the buttresses. Speaking of its ancestry, here's why the new GT's return to Le Mans is so important. In the 60s, Ford tried to buy Ferrari, but Ferrari, at the last minute, tore up the contract and knocked Ford something chronic. So rather than simply go off and lick its wounds, Ford decided it was going to very publicly shame Enzo and his racers. It was going to beat them on the racetrack. So began development of the GT40, and after a shaky start, the GT40 went on to win Le Mans four times on the trot from 1966 to 1969. Basically, it was a very quick, very large middle finger to Italy with love from America. Now, some people are making a lot of noise about the new GT's V6 engine. After all, the GT40 and the last GT came with big noisy V8s. However, a lot of people either don't know about or have forgotten the GT70 rally car from the 70s. That started its life with a V6, so technically a V6 is in the GT's blood. This V6, though, has two massive turbos and promises power in excess of 600 horses. There's carbon ceramic brakes at each corner and one interview promised the best power to weight ratio. That's interesting. Aero's important in a car like this. It's designed to go very, very fast down the Mulzan straight and around all of the corners. Every corner, everywhere. And you see the wing on the back? It's got active aero to get the car in as good shape as possible. And it can be an air brake, which is pretty cool. Those buttresses act as wings to aid downforce and fire air towards the big wing at the back. It rides on active suspension to keep the GT and its driver in the best possible shape in any given situation. And Ford's even fitted a lifter on the front, so if you encounter a speed bump, you won't tear the underside of the car off. There are some wonderful details on the GT, but my two favourites are the air scoops on the buttresses to send air to the engine and the holes in the rear lights. They're there to let hot air out of the car. How cool is that? There are no confirmed figures for the new GT, but using educated guesswork, a 0-62 time of around 3 seconds, probably lower, and a top speed in excess of 200 miles an hour would be fair. Now, Ford is promising to make 250 of these a year. The price? Well, that's around Lamborghini money. A quarter of a million quid sounds about right. If you want one, you're going to have to wait until 2016.